Good evening, New Hope family and friends. Due to the recent pandemic that we are facing, we've made the choice to go virtual with our worship services because we know worship is important and it's particularly important in times like this when we may be feeling a little isolated, frenzied, scared. All those things are, I would say, normal human feelings about what's happening in our world right now. But we are here to bring you hope. We are here to bring you inspiration. And tonight, I pray that you will feel the presence of the Lord as we worship together in spirit and in truth. You'll see children speaking. You will have a wonderful music from the choir. I'm going to bring a word. And then we have some families doing some very creative things that I pray will make you smile. So listen, let's just prepare ourselves to be together, heart to heart, even if we're not face to face. Welcome to worship.
Hi, I'm Colby. At church, we ask people to share words of encouragement. I want to share a few with you. Stay strong and love one another. Keep the faith and trust that God is with us. See you next week. Hey, New Hope family and friends. We uh, miss you like you would not believe. Can't wait to see you again. Hey, if anybody needs anything in the meantime, groceries or anything else, please reach out to us. We can be reached at 213-713-5614. Love you. Hope to see you soon. God bless. Stay safe. So, I recently wrote a letter to the ruling elders of New Hope Church. I wanted to encourage them. They were doing valley work, and I wanted to be with them in the valley. They had been in prayer and deep discussions, 
facing some sobering realities. With so much fear and uncertainty and sickness around us, they were forced to make some really hard decisions. Decisions about how the church moves forward in a time of despair, about how the church can be the church when it's being the church in a different way. So I wrote him a letter. And right after I wrote that letter, I talked on the phone to a lady who had told me that she was quarantined in a room in her house because she had tested positive for coronavirus. She was doing valley work too, and she tried to make sense of it all. And she was being forced to make some hard decisions because she couldn't be her normal mom self, her normal wife self. And I wanted to be in the valley with her where routines are turned upside down and roles are reversed and frustration and fear cover the landscape of our normalcy. Because I know one thing, our hope is not quarantined and our faith is not exiled and our love oftentimes calls us to go down in the valley and define our purpose and the presence of God from there. Sometimes we have to embrace hopelessness in order to see hope born anew in a new kind of justice and a new kind of peace where it's restored and reborn. Look at Ezekiel 37, one through five. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones and he led me around them and there were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. And he came to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall still live. Ezekiel gives us the valley view. I mean, we'd all like to be at the mountaintop, I imagine. But this view from the valley is where resurrection begins. It's where the psalmist cast fear away. It's the view from the valley where dry bones get to live again. It's the view from the valley that allows us to look up and see that the sky is still blue and God's sun is still out. And it allows us to surrender our control and realize that we're guided beyond our best decisions and our worst circumstances. It's where we surrender and we meet God and God embraces us. Oh, this view from the valley is where the Lord will bring us up from the grave and speak life into our spirits. Dry bones will live again. As we renew our purpose, and discover that our worth before God is bigger than any church building, is bigger than a quarantine bedroom, is bigger than our fears, we will embrace knowing that we are covered and protected. Paul wrote a letter to the Romans and he reminded us of God's promise. He said, the letter to the Romans is a promise that where the spirit is, there is life and resurrection and therein lies the prophet's empty grave. There's so much for us to consider. And I would never tell you not to be concerned in a time of trouble, but I would tell you that we will come out of this trouble together. Hand in hand, we'll walk out of the valley. We will journey together because we have a savior that's taken on all that we're going through. He's done it on our behalf, gave his life so that we would have life more abundant, abundantly and be delivered from the vestiges of sin and despair. Don't despair. Don't give up. Hope is being restored as the church is the church and moms are still moms and dads are still dads and faith is being renewed in households across this world where families are actually playing board games together and doing things like they've never done in a long time. Let's meet down in the valley because we need each other in the valley because God's going to take us to the mountaintop and he's giving us strength and faith to face uncertain days with the resurrection mindset. Be encouraged with me. Come down to the valley with me. Let's look up and see God's blue sky.
God bless you. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, the valley experience means that your work in us is not over. Meet us there, be present there, and may your voice echo off the mountainsides, echo the sound of hope and peace and love. May it resonate in our spirits. Amen.
Okay, so we have a few announcements to share with you. I call this time virtually speaking because everything that we're doing right now is definitely online. Our worship committee has come up with some really creative ways for us to stay connected. Starting next Tuesday, uh, March 31st, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., join us in a holy hangout. That's right, the holy hangout is going to happen on Zoom. We'll send you the information so that you can connect. And we're just going to check in with one another, look at one another, laugh together, and just share some prayers and some good times by hanging out in this meetup room so that we can stay connected. Also, on April the 1st, we will begin our Bible study, virtually speaking. It will be from 12 noon to 1 p.m. That's on a Wednesday that it begins, and we look forward to you being a part of that. That will also be done, that will also be done through Zoom. And then we have, on the weekend of Palm Weekend, which is April the 4th, we have the grab and go drive through communion. We want you to come and get your communion. Now I wanna show you what's going to happen. We have communion pods. See the little pod? It's got the wafer and the juice already contained. We will have these in a container in a Ziploc bag at a station. They will be sitting there like this. When you drive up, you just grab and go and let us bless you along the way. It's going to be so great to see your face. And it's yet another way that we can stay connected to one another. I'm excited about it. I hope that you will come to the grab and go, drive through communion. And then after communion, and that is between three and four o'clock on April the 4th. And as you know, at five o'clock, we will have our regular online worship service. But now, let's remember, your offering makes such a difference at a time like this. We need you to give, and there are three ways to do it. Online at mynewhopeprez.org. You can drop a check in the mail at 191 North Orange Street, Orange, California. Or call the church and make arrangements to drop by and we'll receive your offering. What does it do? It helps our operations, but even more so, it helps us to remain as missional as we've always been, as we're continuing to seek out and to work with people who are in significant need. Your offering helps us to do that and to supply for the needs of those who are struggling at this time. I thank you for it. God bless you for it. So now, before we go, before we go into a dedication, we have another hand-washing melody. This time, it's from Angie and Miles. Take a look. Come on in, Cooper. We gotta wash our hands, and we need to wash our paws so we can stop the spread of COVID-19. All right, let's see. And I think I'll sing a song too. Let's see. We wash our hands in the laboratory. We wash our hands to give you the glory. We wash our hands to give you the praise. So we can stop the spread of COVID-19 today. So we can stop the spread of COVID-19 today. Hallelujah in the laboratory. Hallelujah, we give you the glory. Hallelujah, we give you the praise. So we can stop the spread of COVID-19 today. We can stop the spread of COVID-19 today. What did you think, buddy? Did you like that? You know, you don't talk much, so I'm just going to take your wagging tail as a yes. Yeah. Do you want to wash your paws? You want to wash your paws? No. All right, well, I gotta wash my hands again. What else I told you? 
touch with you, so I gotta wash my hands. Alright. Reprise. Hallelujah in the laboratory. Hallelujah, we give you the glory. Hallelujah, we give you the praise. Have a good week, New Hope family, and remember to keep washing those hands. We love you.